Hi, I'm Stephanie and this is my home, the 16th century Chateau de Lalande. Lalande was owned for hundreds of years by a family of marquises who were at the heart of French royal life. One of them even had the honour of being sent by King Louis XV to greet Marie Antoinette on her arrival in France. But, far from being a stuffy museum, this chateau is a living home. I live here all the time and I'm regularly joined by my mother, my family, my friends and wonderful volunteers from all over the world who help me to lovingly restore this historic home. Welcome to La Lande, a chateau filled with life, love and laughter. Big day today. For the first time in six weeks, Mummy is leaving the gates of the chateau and we're going to get garden inspiration in a local garden that is one of the most beautiful in the world and that's just reopened. This is it, she's out and about. <laughs> It's the first time in weeks and weeks and weeks. I love the fact you have lipstick on underneath that mask. Yes, I dress myself up. You look superb. <laughs> and you two also look superb. And you well, made Antoine's yeah, mask. Made it this morning by you, like a, you look like a bandit, Antoine. It's really cool. We have arrived at the most beautiful garden. It's going to give us a lot of inspiration, isn't it, Mummy? Wonderful. <laughs> Absolutely wonderful. The Priory of Notre Dame d'Orsan was founded in 1107 by Robert of Abricel. He was an itinerant preacher and hermit who founded the Abbey of Fontainebleau in 1101. Fontainebleau went on to become so important that even King Richard the Lionheart is buried there. Robert of Abricel died here at Orsan, and as his death approached, all of the local lords sent men to bring a piece of his body back to them because he was considered a saint in his own lifetime and they wanted a part of his body as a relic. As he heard the clamouring men outside, he made the decision that his body would go to Fontevraud for burial, but that his heart would stay here at Orsan. And today, wandering around the gardens, you can see heart motifs everywhere that represent the heart of Robert of Abricel. After his death, this priory became an important site of pilgrimage for over 500 years. But like many monasteries in France, it was sold off after the revolution and became a farm and a near ruin. It was saved in 1990 by the architect Patrice Taravella. He created its magical garden, inspired by medieval monastic gardens, which opened to the public in 1994. Over five years ago, he explained that creating and maintaining a garden like this costs about €150,000 a year. Patrice finally sold the priory in 2017 to go on to a new project in Tuscany, and everyone in the local area was so worried that this garden would be lost but it was bought by Gareth Casey and Cyril Pearson, who've decided to maintain the garden and keep it open to the public. Everyone is so relieved and I am very happy to be here to support them with our entrance fees. Gareth Casey is a fashion designer who created the brand Casey Casey, specialising in hand-dyed fabrics all made in France. They have a timelessness inspired by French rural life, so I can see why he was drawn to this place. Their Instagram account shows photos of their clothes and of these wonderful gardens. Oh my goodness. Wow. It's so beautiful. Marie spotted one of Robert's hearts. Of course, this is uh, medieval inspired, you know, the arrangement and so on. It's lovely. Look at this little old balcony here. It's gorgeous. It really is. Here we're in the potager, aren't yes, we? Yes. It makes me so wanting to put our uh, straw around the plants. Look at this. Mine is that high. And as somebody said, you see, if you want maize, you've got to put it in squares. So that's nice to me. Oh, look at that. All of these are in, in flowers. Here. The onions? Yeah. Yes, our onions are still tiny. But they must have a lot of manure here, which we do not have. It's extremely protected with the hedges, yes. the house, the trees. Mind you, ours is a walled garden. It's rather protected yes, as well. Oh, is, I think you might be searching for excuses now, Mummy. Yeah, You're stretching a little. Yeah. <laughs> so 
rosemary very good toilet cheese. That's what we need in our garden, that's more to, rosemary. That's to make beer. Is it? It's the hops. Yeah. I wonder what they're going to grow at the foot of those very, very tall canes. Yeah, yeah, tomatoes. 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 And a poivre, peppers. Look at that. Beautiful. I, I must do that to my tomatoes. This garden is entirely reserved for the planting of Les Samples, which were the medicinal herbs and plants that were grown in the medieval times, especially in monasteries, to heal people who came there as a hospital. In the 9th century, Charlemagne made a decree saying there were 88 different plant species that should be planted by people to look after their health. And now, all of that knowledge is lost. I look at these, I would have no idea what to turn to if I was feeling a bit jippy. What about you, mummy? <laughs> bit of a immortal oriental. So maybe if we eat this, we will become immortal and live in China. Oh, this is very <laughs> pretty, isn't it? I wonder what it is. It's a sort of... Uh, a type of cardoon? Cardoon, yes. Oh, cardoon marie. Marie's yeah. cardoon. Yeah. And this is a must medium. plant that. This we still use camomile. Oh yes. Camomile in France is very much, very much taken. Um, I remember in my childhood, I would always be offered a cup of camomile tea. I can't know of as well, but I have no idea which part of the plant they used flowers, root, leaf, no idea. It'd be wonderful to look all this up. Yes, yes. Oh, al alchemy. Alchemy also is grown in everybody's garden practically because it's so lovely. But why did the monks use it for? Apparently they used it for mild uh diarrhea or swelling. <laughs> <laughs> and isn't this um, absinthe behind you? This looks like it, doesn't it? Well, we know exactly what the monks must have used the absinthe for. <laughs> and this is mallow. Guimauve is the French name for marshmallow. Marshmallows were originally made from the sap of this plant, but in medieval times it was used to treat coughs and bronchitis. Plantain was used to treat skin conditions and insect bites. Throughout the garden there are windows looking yes. into other parts yes. of the garden. Yes. just opens up vistas. It's magical. It's beautiful. You feel as though you're in a secret garden or you're peering into another world. Well, I am in another world and uh, I need the proper dress here. Yes, we should have brought long dresses yeah. and a couple of little sheep to follow us around. <laughs> now that is a gorgeous alleyway. It's beautiful. Oh. And I love this hedge. This is what we planted around the chapel, isn't it, Mummy? Yes, it is. I love the fact that the leaves are striated. Yes. It's so pretty. They look frilly. But they are in very good state here. Yeah, they look a little bit different they haven't from had our any hedge. Sheep around them. Aloysius took against ours, didn't he? Yeah. The next part of the garden is the apple orchard but yeah. i'm a little bit too ashamed to go considering oh, the state of our orchard no let's let's embrace this let's learn oh well now that is an orchard and there's still blossom it's beautiful they've managed to make every single tree the same shape it is beautiful and look how they've done the edge so it grows on the oh, very Oh, do you know? I just thought that was steaks. I didn't yeah. notice. <gasps> oh, wow. It is trees. Yes. Well, now that is an entrance arch. Oh. This is heaven, isn't it? Yes, it's heaven. Well, I found my spot for the afternoon. If only there was a ripe apple I could pluck and eat here. But it's we're beautiful. Only at the blossom stage. And then I sit in the corner there. 
is very much a living orchard. And at La Lande at the moment in the vegetable garden, we're working on exactly this, creating beautiful sight lines. I love the fact that looking out of the orchard into the garden beyond, you see a lovely fountain exactly in our line of sight. And I want to make things like that throughout our vegetable garden. It's just giving me so much inspiration. This area is known as the promenade and it's next to the field. I like this. I like the sudden stop between the formal garden and the wild garden with this area to walk mm -hmm. through. We could do something like this. Well, yes, if you and do. there's the field. Oh, and oh, I spot a couple of wood nymphs. <laughs> this would be wonderful against the wilder parts of the garden. Yes. Just a lovely alleyway like but you this. See, we could make it so beautiful because beyond the wall of the orchard, there is a river. Oh, I know. We have so much luck mm. at La Lande with the land that we have, but we're not making the most of it. No. It's like a maze through the grass. Look. It's a wonderful idea. What are we going to find if we go through the maze of grass? Yeah. Let's see. Someone lives here, but who? There's a little house. I see movement in the grass, mummy. Can you? Dead ahead. The grass is so long. Who are you living in there? I don't believe oh, it. Yes. I don't believe it. It's the oh, same. Aloysius, yeah. how did you get here? It's the oh, same gosh. sheep as ours. Oh, lovely. Oh, they didn't have these last time I visited. No. Well, there you go, mummy. It's official. The gardens of the Prieuré d'Orsan are I've, copying La Lande. They have copied us. Yeah, well, word was going to get out that we <laughs> just do have the best garden. Oh. Yes, you are gorgeous. And they look very happy. You're very pretty. And from the field with the sheep, there is the prettiest view of the old priory. Mummy, it's time for us to go into the labyrinth. No. Yes. They have to. Let's go. We want one, don't we? Nicholas really, really wants a maze. Okay, after you, Mummy. You sure? Oh, uh, yes. Will we ever come out? We're not making much headway, Mummy. Oh, Mummy. In Christian symbolism, mazes represent the difficulty of attaining salvation, which is why a lot of monasteries had them. Oh, wow. I think we've come to a spiritual dead end. This is where we reflect. On the bad choices we have made. Yes. And try and get back onto the right path. Yes. Well, Mummy, if you stop to smell every plant, we're never going to get to the centre. And as it is, it doesn't look as though we're going to get to the centre any time soon. No, we've got to get I can hear here. Marie. I can even see Marie on occasion, but can I get to her? <laughs> Everything in this maze is edible. So the walls are created with plums. And then all of the spirals that you see are pears. Hello, At the base... Well, hello. Oh, hello. We, we can't get to each other. No. Oh. We found... You need to find the little uh, rotonde covered in the green. Oh. It's really nice. We're going to wait for you here. Marie and Antoine have told us the secrets of the maze, so we think we'll be able to get to them. <laughs> straight. Straight. And then turn right. Straight this way? No, 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 no. Go back. Go Straight back. the other way? Go back. We'd be lost without them. <laughs> I feel like we're nearing them now, Mum, even though it feels as though we're getting further away. Is it? Is it? We have reached salvation. Oh, thank goodness. Salvation was proving very hard to find. Hello, lady. Here are the two angels that we find in heaven waiting for us. It's so nice. It's so beautiful. <laughs> getting out is a lot easier than getting in because Antoine remembers the way. Thank you, thank you, Antoine, for leading us, well, away from salvation according to the symbolism. I think we're going to have to drop the symbolism. It's getting confusing. Is it? Well, Antoine just led us away from salvation back to normal life. 
No, no, you carry your salvation in the normal life. Sweetheart. Okay, you take it with you. We brought yes. our salvation with us to the yes. next part of the oh, garden, oh, which is look another orchard. Oh, mummy likes look this one. Lavender. That's what I want, mummy. Yes, definitely. Yes, popular choice. This is the pear orchard. So it's a square garden with a circle within the square yes. and the lavender filling in the edges. Exactly. I think we need this. Definitely. Yes, we need this. I really want that. We need to talk to Monsieur Nicolas. Exactly. And kick him into shape. Exactly. And Antoine, you're going to help figuring the square and the cycle inside. Okay. Geometry will help. It's really beautiful. In fact, it could be seen as a homeschooling project. Yes, I'm sure. In medieval monasteries, the monks would be buried in the orchard, which might explain why they had such excellent fruit. Definitely. turned into cider uh, this is the garden of marie this is your garden this is the garden of marie look this is i think my favorite so far this is amazing isabel look at the roses oh. where are my scissors <laughs> <laughs> i have the bag, I have the bag. <laughs> oh yes it's beautiful Because we're in an ancient priory here, there's a lot of religious symbolism in the design of the gardens. And the Garden of Marie is, of course, celebrating the Virgin Mary. The colours are all white, yellows and pinks, signifying her different virtues. White roses for her purity, pink roses for her gratitude and peace, and yellow roses signifying her glory to come. The roses are all ancient roses, and the garden itself, in its own garden room, symbolizes the walled garden in the Song of Songs. That's the rose that you brought back from England yes. and that's planted it at the back of the orchard. Yes. Have you found the name of it? I've never known what it was. Well, there we go. We now know what we had all this time. What do you think of this one, Antoine? It's very It's great, this one. But Antoine was wondering why it would not be called the Jardin d'Antoine. Ah! That's not fair. Well, it's only for women, the roses garden. I accept. This has given me a bit of an idea because somebody recently sent a parcel for Antoine saying he could only open it on St. Anthony's which Day. Is, yeah. So, why don't we have a couple of gardens, one of which is Marie's garden and one is a St. Anthony garden? And in St. Anthony's garden, in the middle, in um, a waterproof, beautiful wicker basket you know what i mean but waterproof we can put the lost and found of the chateau <laughs> that would be perfect in the middle of saint anthony's garden if you've lost something check saint anthony's garden we need a big box though because a big there's box so there's such a lot of garden. socks a lot of odd socks i wonder what the next garden is yes it's hard to leave the roses <laughs> mommy with her little plastic gloves this is where it gets very sad. These are the dahlias. Oh no, that's why it's sad, because our dahlias haven't exactly. even arrived yet. Exactly. Gosh, this is going to be splendid. It's interesting to see this garden, because we're about to make our cut flower garden. And this is just a very, very simple way of doing it. And they've put squares in the beds. We could do squares, if you wanted. Yes. I... There's dahlias and lupins. But goodness... I don't know when our uh, dahlias will arrive. No, I don't know. And Not I don't yet. know if they will be doing much this year. Well, hopefully next year. We have just stepped round the corner into heaven. We're in heaven. This is the vegetable garden. The first vegetable garden we saw was just their decorative one. This is the vegetable garden that they use for the restaurant that they have here, when obviously there isn't lockdown, and also to preserve ancient species. Oh, mummy. Mummy, it's I, heaven. I can't imagine the hostel being used. I think that's more for beauty, but look how beautiful. There's even ferns. It's beautiful. This is just the most gorgeous vegetable garden I can imagine. And the, the size of the rhubarb over there. Who is <laughs> compared with our rhubarb? There are rhubarbs more like this rhubarb. Yes. In fact, our yeah. rhubarb is a little bit bigger than this. But mummy, the alliums. I oh, love alliums yes. and we've never had them. Yeah. Look at those happy bees buzzing around the yes. alliums. We do need alliums, sweetheart. 
They've got huge strawberries already. We've only had the little wild ones so far. They're vast. Yes. Can you, the scent of the strawberries? Yes, yes. Mummy, that is just embarrassing. It is. Stinky. Our poor struggling artichoke. We're saying. We need this. But look, this is the same region of France. If they can do it here, of course. We have the same climate, the same soil. We can do it at home. We need manure. Yes. We've got to have a, an understanding with the farmer. Why don't you have manure. a little understanding with the farmer, Mummy? All oh, of these. Yes is mint but all different type of mint oh there's one which is mint grapefruit mint banana no mint apple where's mint banana mint banana is over there mint basilic yeah banana mint well well and as a backdrop to it all the ancient priory we live in one of the most beautiful parts of the world, don't we? Yes. Filled with history yes. and architecture and these gorgeous gardens. I feel very, very lucky to be living in France right now. Is this for yes. bumblebees? It is bumblebees. It is for anybody who wants to go in. It's an insect hotel. <laughs> uh, yes. That's what it call is. It. Wonderful. It's what is good for the garden, you know? Uh, with straw inside. And they make their own home in there. Look, look, there is yeah, yeah, something. Some... Um... Marie, mm. I think Antoine's been standing behind you at some point, hasn't he? Oh, Just no. at some point or other. Yeah. <laughs> it's your favourite joke at the moment. Nick showed it to you. Oh dear. <laughs> we know who to blame. Look at this tool. You're fascinated by all the straw, Mummy. Yes, because mummy. I wanted to do it for a few days. I was more interested in the raised beds. Oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? Absolutely beautiful. This is the yeah. raised bed garden. And look at that wisteria starting in the background. These are the beds where they plant the gourds. All oh, of the I'm gourds get planted up here. I'm not surprised. Oh, Mummy, we've got a lot of work to do. I wonder how much Dan can do in his one or two days a oh, week. Oh man, it's fun. <laughs> we have so many other things to do. To catch up first. Yeah. We spend so much time looking at the garden that we forget how beautiful the building is. Yeah. Like a fairy tale. This is another example of those sight lines. Just one lovely structural thing at the end of a sight line makes such a difference. And then if we look this way, oh! Oh. They've got lights in here. Imagine this, all lit with hundreds of tiny bulbs at night and maybe tables and chairs for people to have an al fresco dinner. If it was a la lande, we could be having pizza from the ancient bread oven with lots of delicious rocket on top, plucked from the garden at the last minute <laughs> with some herbs. Oh, mummy, and think of the tomato sauces from our tomatoes. <laughs> the sky's the limit. Oh, it's beautiful. I just, I mean, this is peace, this is wonderful. And there is such a lovely um, mixture of shade and light yes, in yes. the garden. This is the equivalent of our pergola. This was a balcony. It's overlooking the area where they plant the gourds. And it is made of posts of chestnut and completely covered with vines and lovely, beautiful lights. And I feel that our pergola could be a little bit like this one day, though slightly less rustic because obviously we're at a chateau and it's just off the main reception room. So I'd like it to feel like a halfway between the garden and the house. But what I can take away from this is the idea of beautiful planting over the structure itself and also lots of tiny outdoor lights and I think big planters in between the sofas and chairs and tables with wonderful plants as well. It's, it's very inspirational coming here. I just can't wait to carry on with our garden plans because I feel that we're starting at the beginning of a very exciting journey at La Lande now. What's happened? He forgot his bottle in the labyrinth. Oh, no. In the right middle of right the Right in the centre of the labyrinth. Well, it looks as though you have a quest. Yes. I'm going we'll to go with you. We'll meet you in one hour. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you found the best spot on a warm day. 
It's wonderful. How is it possible that it's only May? It is bakingly hot. It feels like August. It does. It? it absolutely does. This is odd because we've just been through the most glorious garden, but I think this is my favourite part. The way the light is hitting the arches with all the leaves. I don't know, I think there's something magical about this. It's so simple, but so gorgeous. I found the fountain that I want for the centre of the walled vegetable garden. I found it because I wanted something that was a little more rustic than the marble fountain that we have, which is waiting to go somewhere, which doesn't seem right for the vegetable garden. At the same time, I wanted a pedestal with a statue of a gardener on top. And I wasn't quite sure how to amalgamate those two things, but I found it. Come and have you a You found a fountain. I found it. Behold our future fountain. It's perfect for a vegetable garden. You can fill up a watering can at it. And imagine if on that pedestal were a statue of a gardener. Absolutely. Perfect. We've, we've found it. We've yes. nailed it. The simplest solution. There they are. The lovely Lalanders in the middle of all of these vines of Chenin Blanc. What a heaven. I love that wall with windows in, made out of just a hedge yes. and a wildflower meadow in front. Well, did you enjoy it, Mummy? I love it. It is very inspirational. Yes, I love it. I is love it giving it. you ideas? I have ideas, but I would like a designer to share ideas with, yes. so that we don't, um, so that everything flows. From we, one yes, to the other. wonderful. We have to wear masks in the shop, so. Everyone's ready, except for me. Could I have my mask, Mummy? I think it's in your pocket. Can you see? Yes, I have it. Thank you. I wonder where they're from. They're beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, this wonderful. Well, this is my favourite part of any outing. <laughs> Bye-bye, Orsan. We'll certainly be back soon to see you develop over the seasons. A huge thank you to all of our patrons at Lalande who are making this vlog possible, especially our Marquis and Marquis of Lalande. Alice Allen, Daniela, Dan Banda, Danelle Banakovic, Jason and Valerie Best, Veronica Castillo, Laura Damare, Sakura Dennis, Dottie, Anna Farmery, Caroline Furster, Brenda Gibbons, Brenda Harris, Anthony Hindmarsh, Laure Ukir, Yedelund, Pauline Johnston, Jimmy Kemp, Shannon Maitland, JC O'Ward, Maureen Palmer, Bettina Rojek, Barbara Schmelzer, Sven Schreiber, Patty Suhu, Sarah Thornton, Colleen Troyer, Brian Woodward, and David Young. And thank you to all of you.